Coming up on today's Harvest, pressure-free parenting. Mother of four and licensed, licensed mental health counselor Brenda Yoder joins us with practical tips for weary moms. And Pastor Mark Lance explains what it really means to live life without limits in part two of how to make 2016 the best year of your life. I'll have the latest on those American sailors who were detained by Iran. Plus, Brian Bush updates us on the situation in the entire Middle East. We think it's an hour worth sticking around for. The Harvest Show starts right now. Hello and welcome to the Harvest <laughs> Show, as you can see right here. There's some nice uh, mug placement by our friend Chuck Freebie there. And smell, coffee smells good today, yeah, Chuck. A little creme brulee in there. Nice creme brulee. And you need it. It's uh, this cold oh. snap around. It's, That's it's, it's right. It's like cold. My hands are still cold. Well, you know, you... You can, I can tell that I'm really now used to the weather here. Yeah, so because, you know, yesterday I went out, Monday I was freezing. I mean, it was like below Baz zero. Yeah. I mean, six below. below yeah. yeah. And then yesterday it was like, what, maybe 18 degrees. And I was like, oh, it's much warmer today. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've adjusted well. Yeah, so. Yeah, I just got in from London. And, How'd it uh, go? Uh, I just flew in from London, and boy, boy are my arms tired. No, boy, is, is my behind tired. You know, those airplane seats uh, wear you down after a while. But uh, uh, had a great trip over there, mm -hmm. meeting with our Feed the Hungry office, and uh, connecting on 2016 some developments, uh, exciting developments, with reaching out to refugees from mm -hmm. Iraq and Syria as that situation continues uh, to deteriorate. 3,000 people a day making their way over from Iraq and Syria to Greece in this winter weather. And they expected the numbers wow. to come way down, but uh, it's still a very healthy and, and, and strong stream of people making their way across. And unfortunately, people perishing along the way mm -hmm. with uh, those rubber dinghies uh, capsizing or, or being overloaded and sinking. Uh, it's been an interesting conversation over there in the EU and in the UK regarding the church's response to this, because mm -hmm. you've got the political responses right. and the national security issues and interests and borders and fences and and uh, you know where these people should go should we take them should we not take them similar to the kind of discussions we're having here in North America mm -hmm. as well uh, but the church is is uh, uh, kind of standing on the side of let's we've got to do something and so uh, it seems like the greatest wisdom is to help the people where they're coming from and at mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully you know providing assistance that's going to help them kind of stay in their region so that when uh, the conditions change and when mm -hmm. hopefully again the uh, civil conflicts subside they can be repatriated back to their homes which ultimately is where the majority of the refugees want to be they want to go back, back to their homes and resume their lives in their own cultures and their own nations and it's interesting that you would say that because we don't hear that conversation going on taking place there um, saying that refugees actually want to go back to mm -hmm. a peaceful uh, society or right. wherever they came from I just wanted to know from your perspective Stefan do you feel like the church is uh, or churches um, are kind of just being politically correct and not taking a position or they are just their hands are tied they don't have the resources yeah really it seems like they are uh, being intentional and thoughtful about you know okay. do, being compassionate and showing love and showing um, uh, goodness and kindness to those that are hurting uh, but they want to do it in the, the best way possible okay. and uh, there's been right now there's a big uh, aid appeal to provide winter clothing and uh, diapers and blankets and, and health items and food items uh, to the refugees uh, that are mm -hmm. in places uh, where you know they, they just don't have what they need to survive in, in cold, cold climates. So it was interesting conversations there. Another big thing in England right now, big thing this week, uh, was the, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a international convention of the, the Anglican, Anglican Church. Church. Yeah. Yes, and uh, that was brought about by uh, uh, really the African Anglican Church yes. standing strong to be guardians of the truth, mm -hmm. having issue with the Anglican Church in the West uh, being more liberal and open to things like homosexual marriage, ordination of homosexual ministers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, controversies like that. Yeah, unlike the Vatican Synod, there hasn't really been a lot of leaks 
from the Anglican uh, Synod. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, people are wondering, well, what's going on? But there have not been any walkouts. We do know that much. Right. Not, None of the delegates have walked out, which was one of the things that was threatened. They were very worried about a schism mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of this separation between the, the African Anglican Church, which has taken a very conservative viewpoint on yeah. things, and, and, the really more liberal, and the more liberalized yeah. American, well, and, and Western Europe mm -hmm. has liberalized somewhat as well on this. Um, the, uh, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church, uh, Welby, I can't, Justin Welby, he's the Archbishop of Canterbury, um, is trying to walk the fine line here and, right. and trying to keep everybody happy. And usually what happens when you try to keep everybody happy is you make nobody happy. Uh, but the, the main areas of disagreement have been the ordination of women mm -hmm. uh, and openly gay men mm -hmm. as priests. And also the conservatives believe this to be uh, contrary to scripture and, mm -hmm. and morally wrong. And so this has uh, been a big back and forth at this uh, synod, I guess, is, right. is the word to use in Canterbury. Yeah. Well, you know, it was interesting that he said that, you know, it, it would harm the church. It would hurt, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be disastrous. And here's a quote that I found it, it to be interesting. He said, um, it would be good if the church was, un if the good, you know, if the church could come together. But if they split, um, you know, you can have churches that don't uh, um, subscribe to your teachings um, in the West about homosexual marriage and what have you. And then the conservative group can still uh, be a part. To me, that sounds like a split, yeah, you know. Yeah. So you, you're essence, right. Yeah. That's right. The African churches. Um, want to definitely maintain scripture, yep. which uh, we all know what that position is, and right. their position is that homosexual marriage is a sin. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how yeah. it all how it, how it works out. out. Yeah, and like you said, uh, the big threat was would one group walk out? Would the American mm -hmm. Episcopalian Church mm -hmm. walk out, or would the African Anglican Church uh, walk out? Another thing I want to make you aware of is that Making Healthy Choices is on again tonight and uh, some great content there. Uh, Drew Sumrall and Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez on health and wellness. And uh, Fijoya Chapelier is actually standing by. We were talking about the cold weather here in the Midwest. She is standing by in beautiful Hawaii. What do you have for us, Fijoya, or should I say aloha? Aloha, Valerie, and aloha, all of you watching from beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. We're going to be live to teach you how to make healthy choices. The renowned and esteemed Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez is going to answer all of your health questions. And so you're going to be able to maximize your life potential just by making probably a few small changes and won't hurt a bit. So make sure you join us at 8 p.m. live, and we're coming to you Wednesday, so make sure you watch it. Wonderful. Thank you, Joya. That's 8 to 10 p.m tonight, Wednesday night, and want you to tune in and uh, get some good information there as well and some great, great things that are going to help you in your health and wellness. And it's never too late to join the conversation here on Harvest. You can visit us on Facebook, Twitter. You can even share your thoughts via email at live at We want you to stay with us. The international news is coming up next. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. Watch the most inspiring guest interviews right here. Watch my weekly video updates from Israel. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. It is the 13th day of January in 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Iran has released the 10 sailors from those two small U.S. Navy boats who were detained Tuesday after crossing into Iranian waters. The sailors were taken to international waters and freed there. The Pentagon confirms the release and says there were no indications the sailors were harmed during their detention. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter says he's pleased the sailors have departed Iran and are now back in U.S. hands. Iran's Revolutionary Guard said the boats entered Iranian territorial waters illegally. U.S. officials say the boats traveling from Kuwait to Bahrain drifted into Iranian coastal waters in the vicinity of Farsi Island in the northern Persian Gulf. 
Apparently, after one of those boats experienced mechanical problems and the other attempted to render aid, the incident threatened to be a key test for Iranian-U.S. relations following a nuclear deal in which the U.S. and other world powers agreed to lift international sanctions in return for Iran reducing its nuclear program. Relief from the sanctions could begin as early as this week. And those aren't the only countries with strained relations. A private Turkish news agency reports police in the Mediterranean city of Antalya detained three Russian nationals in a raid on suspected Islamic State militants. Dogan News Agency says anti-terrorism police conducted the raids a day after an IS suicide bomber detonated a bomb in Istanbul, killing 10 foreigners, most of them German tourists. Russia's consulate general in Ankara confirmed the detention of the trio. The Russian suspects were allegedly in contact with IS fighters in conflict zones and provided logistical support to the group. Israel's military carried out an airstrike against a group of Gazan fighters placing explosives along the border between the two territories. Mourners wept at a morgue in the Gaza Strip where the body of 31-year-old Musa Zotair was being held. The brother of the victim, Salman Zotair, said Musa was killed while fishing. The Palestinian Health Ministry said three people were injured in the attack. The border region has remained largely calm since a 50-day summer war in 2014. In Asia, at least 14 people were killed in a bomb attack on a polio vaccination center in southwestern Pakistan today. The bombing on the outskirts of Quetta killed 12 people, policemen, a soldier, and a civilian. Another 23 people were wounded. The bomb exploded shortly before vaccination teams were due to be dispatched to local neighborhoods as part of a three-day immunization campaign. Now, the bombing hit a police patrol close to the center making security forces the primary target. No one has claimed responsibility for the blast. And a top U.S. official said today, the United States stands shoulder to shoulder with India and other countries in that region against the threat of extremism. Under Secretary of State Sarah Sewell made the comments during a conference on democratic values and violent extremism in the Indian capital of New Delhi. Sewell also said the public figures should be quick to react in condemning extremist acts and the misguided beliefs that are used to justify that kind of violence. All of these voices, moms and imams alike, are essential to building the critical mass of influence needed to discredit violent extremism within our communities. ISIS reportedly has threatened police officers in Mumbai, upset that the anti-terror squad there has been successful in thwarting ISIS recruiting efforts. Still to come, Brian Bush joins me with the latest on those American sailors who were detained by Iran. But up next, licensed mental health counselor Brenda Yoder joins us with some practical tips for weary moms. There is much more harvest to come after this. Friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles around the world through our Spread the Word ministry. We're so thankful for your support to help us take the best news of all time to more of those hungry to hear it. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Sumrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people you save me, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Want to accept Jesus as your personal savior or have questions about Christian life? Call Prayer Line at 1-800-365-3732. You know, there are so few things in this world that you can count on anymore, especially when it comes to our financial future and planning for retirement. We live in a dynamic world defined by change, but when it comes to securing our retirement income, we want stability 
not uncertainty. And that's why I consistently talk about charitable gift annuities. A gift annuity provides a safe and steady income stream which is fixed for life. And you are investing into changing lives for Jesus Christ at the same time. If you are over 49 and a half years of age and you have at least $10,000 in a savings account or CD, call us today. Let us show you how you can have at least one form of retirement income that you can count on. When you lay up your treasure in heaven, you can count on it being there waiting for you. So call us today and let us help you have a secure income for the rest of your life. Brenda Yoda wears many hats, wife, mother, and licensed mental health counselor, and she knows all too well the pressures moms face. She says we don't have to do it all to be all that God wants us to be. Welcome to The Harvest Show. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Okay, like I was reading your, your, your story and reading your book, and I was like, wow, I remember the days my daughter is mm -hmm. um, now, you know, in college, and I remember those days and how busy it was for me. Kind of tell us your story. You have four children ranging from age teenage years to uh, young adulthood yeah and I heard overheard you say that one of them moved back moved back home is that a good yes. thing or you're still figuring no, it out? no we're figuring it out but that's a good thing <laughs> uh -huh. she's getting ready to go to the mission field so okay. she's home until she does that um you know a few years ago I was um, really exhausted and I found myself dreaming of retirement and I wasn't even 40 yet and wow. at that point in time, I had toddlers to teens, and I was teaching 180 kids as a high school history teacher. Mm -hmm. And our life was just crazy. And um, I was just mentally and emotionally exhausted. And I kept on feeling like I was really trapped and that this wasn't the best life. The worst part is that I really became angry. Mm -hmm. You know, all of those emotions and feelings mm -hmm. stretched became... Um, irritation and frustration and anger and I had conflict with my teen at that time that was really damaging our family mm. and so I um, really had to look at myself and say I can't I blame them mm -hmm. I can't blame who do I blame except for our circumstances and I really had to step back and figure out what I could control to make uh, life less um, Hectic. Mm -hmm. Okay, but as so as a licensed uh, mental health specialist, mm -hmm. you at least have that clinical background to know what was happening. There are mothers who are watching today or just moms in general who they don't have that perspective. Right. Actually, I didn't at that time. Oh, I was okay. actually, I'd been a stay-at-home mom and I was a teacher, high school teacher at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was at that point that I had le actually left the classroom. I left my profession of teaching, which really is my first love and then went back to school, not necessarily to be a counselor per se, but to um, have a different career that would allow me full-time and flexible employment or part-time. Mm -hmm. So as a mom who was really just trying to survive, I, um, everything was working well on the outside. If you looked at us from the outside, you would have thought, wow, she manages things well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were involved in church, we're involved in the community, but inside I was really falling apart. Mm -hmm. And my anger, um, and my irritation was really becoming um, a negative impact on our family. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that uh, learning to separate what w you need to do and things that you could drop, you know, right. to, to balance the busyness and, and not doing it all. Right. When you think, you, well, we kind of have to do it all. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the, the, uh, the rationale, what was the rationale that be between determining what to continue with and what could be dropped? Right. I think at that point in time, necessarily, I knew that I couldn't control. The only thing I could control was me. And that part of the equation was really falling apart mm -hmm. because my mental energy and my emotional energy was just um, strapped at all times. Even though my household was working well, my kids mm -hmm. had delegated chores, the, our household ran smoothly. I did all the freezer meals. Uh, we ran like a like a fine tooth <laughs> comb, really. But I, I often talk about it, it's like you're walking a tightrope and you can control everything and that busyness and everything seems to be going just well until the hard news comes, mm -hmm. until life really happens for you and that's really what was happening for us. Well, Brenda, I realized that I derived my identity from 
the busyness of you know accomplishing all of the busy stuff that I was doing as a mom. Right. I quickly learned that that was a dangerous place to live, mm -hmm. to function because you you can't do that. And I you know I soon learned that my identity was in Christ, right. and I would have to go to Him to find out who I really was at the time as a mother. I mean, kind of talk about that stolen identities because you talk about that in your project. I do. It's called balance, busyness, and not doing it all. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those roles, we can very easily identify ourselves with being a stay-at-home mom, which I was for a while, and then I became a working mom, or you're a soccer mom, or you're a pastor's wife, or a worship leader. And when we really focus our identity on those roles, we strive, and we think we've got to be better, um, perfect. How can I do it more, do it better? And then when those roles change, our identity really becomes lost. Mm -hmm. But we can also become so wrapped up in busyness mm -hmm. that it feeds, kind of feeds, if I'm not doing that, then somehow I'm not worthwhile or I'm not doing what's most important. When God really tells us we're, we're born to be, not to do. Mm -hmm. And as women, we can get so caught up into kind of being the Pinterest perfect um, role that we think we should be, mm -hmm. and it really pulls away from where really our priorities should be. Mm. You also uh, share about uh, the importance of understanding yourself. Yeah. Because then from understanding you, yourself, and you can determine where your priorities should right. be. I have women work through a lot, whether I speak or, or write, working through their strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I don't like calling weaknesses weaknesses. I actually call them lesser strengths. Okay. So um, I being able to identify your strengths and then really being able to identify these kind of are my weak areas, but that's okay. That's how God created me. It was really a wake up call for me one time as a young mom. I was found myself lying on the couch one day just bawling because I had somehow felt I had fallen short with something and uh, really just felt the Lord speak to me saying, you know, I made you with that weakness and I know about it and I, I made it good. So as a whole person, as we can, uh, really lean into our strengths mm -hmm. and stop trying to fix our weaknesses, mm -hmm. then we, we don't put all that energy into trying to make ourselves better do this in better areas over where, here. Right, where exactly. You, yeah. That's such a good point that you make because we think of weaknesses as something very negative, but mm -hmm. we experience, I feel sometimes the, the more weak we are, the more grace we experience to yeah. do what God has called us to do. Would you say that? I would too. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, um, I kind of talk about a scenario that I have played out with my kids, which is cooking is kind of my weakness. It's something I do because I have to, but I don't enjoy doing it. <laughs> and so all of those classroom parties or team meals really cause me stress. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, I told all of my kids, sign me up for napkins, sign me up for plates, Good pop for Doritos. <laughs> because, because really, if I have to bake a cake or do a big meal for something, that truly does stress me out. Mm -hmm. And so when giving myself the freedom to say, sign me up for napkins, then I can... I can just purchase napkins, bring them, but then be able to maybe engage in that activity with my child or support them in a different way, like mentor kids in the classroom, which is more my strength, rather than spending that stressful time at home mm -hmm. doing something that maybe another mom who's baking as her gift, she yeah. can step in and do that. With no stress at all. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk more about stress-free parenting when we return with author Brenda Yoder. Today is your day. This is your moment. Life is calling. It's time to get back that extra spark that you've been missing, and it's simple with Mineral Concentrate, an all-natural trace mineral product designed to promote energy and focus without sugar nor caffeine. Call 1-800-965-2345 or log on to mhclife.com. Today is your day. It's time for life. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. 
Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more? Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit lacy.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. And we're back with author Brenda Yoder. She's the author of Balance, Busyness, and Not Doing It All. I love that part. That's so liberating that you don't have to do it all to be what God wants you to be as a parent, as a mother. Um, let's talk about the balance part. I mm -hmm. mean, because, you know, now women can benefit what, from what you have to say, mm -hmm. but you had to walk through it personally. You didn't right. have all of this. You didn't have a book called Balance, Busyness, and Not Doing It All. Right. So how did you begin to balance things? I started balancing things by really um, identifying kind of in our season of parenting, mm -hmm. what is really most important now. And for me, that included switching careers, which is very hard. That wow, that's huge. It is huge. I really felt like I couldn't, like I was a failure when I left the classroom mm -hmm. because I looked around and saw all these other moms who were doing it. Um, but for me, it wasn't working. But I think that's what really is most important for all women is to find what works for your family and mm -hmm. you have to do what's best for you and your family at your stage of parenting. Mm -hmm. um, as I was going through graduate school, I look back now and say, well, how did I do that? How did I go to graduate school <laughs> when I had one going to college at the yeah. same time? And yet, um, for the first time, I was home during the day, which gave me um, some mental space, which I really needed. Mm -hmm. What I realized raising four kids on my own and then teaching teenagers all day long is I never had a minute of time that I was by myself. Mm -hmm. And so to me, even just that alone time mm -hmm. is what balanced um, the inner balance for me mm -hmm. and allowed me then to be able to juggle things a little bit differently. Um, so in all stages of life, we have to always reassess, I think, to look at what what is most important for a family at that time. Wow. You talk about uh, there are only certain things that you can do. And mm -hmm. so how does someone uh, determine and define, you know, things that I really need to do and concentrate on versus the things that should be delegated and can be delegated uh, to those around me, to, to, in your case, my husband and, and my children? Sure. So if there are things that my kids can do, I let them do them and I expect them to do them. It doesn't always mean that it's easy, but mm -hmm. once they're old enough to do things for themselves, then I kind of hand that baton to them, mm -hmm. whether that be putting their clothes away or unloading the dishwasher. You know, I haven't had a matching Tupperware lid in a drawer that I think I know where it is for years, but that works for me because I would rather have the time that when my kids say, mom, are you busy? which really is the only moment that there's something they're needing me that only I can do, right. that I can set something aside yeah. and sit down with them. Uh, when my youngest was in sixth grade, he came to me with this board game that he had built for a class project on Andrew Carnegie. And he said, you know, mom, are you busy? And I saw him holding this and I had this moment inside of me that was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to sit down and play that game with him, but I knew that's what he was needing. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that when the kids say, are you busy? It really means, hey, I, really I need, need this time, yeah. but I'm mm -hmm. afraid to ask you because I see you doing these things that really other people can do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like cleaning the kitchen or um, even uh, different tasks that if you have to let them go sometimes and have everyone pitch in to do later, mm -hmm. those are some of the things that you really need to set back and say, okay, these are things that cause me stress and I need to delegate those so that when the moments are most important that I, I really need to be aware of, that I can step back and say, I, I need to do this with my child right now or I mm -hmm. need to sit down and listen to them. And the other things will be taken care of, whether it be by me or by someone else, um, that will be okay to be left alone. Okay, so you've trained your children or you train them, you know, to come to you and there are times when you say to them, no, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. But a lot of parents haven't done that. And so we have this entire generation of helicopter moms yeah. and mm -hmm. dads, oh, mainly moms. Right. They're ever present everywhere, 
their kids go to college, they have a cell phone, mm -hmm. kids don't have to figure it out anymore. Um, and as a result, we've created this entitlement generation mm -hmm. or we've enabled our kids mm -hmm. and that's harmful and you talk about that. I do, I talk about don't steal the struggle, mm -hmm. which really as Christian parents is something we need to pay attention to. And I'm right in the same boat, you know, I'm still raising kids so right. there's still that, always that um, temptation to be able to swoop in and say, oh, I'll do that for you instead. But um, really as parents, if we're teaching our kids to have a relationship with the Lord, they need to know that they need God whether that be with your toddler in instructing them on how to, to do something, then you step back and let them work through that frustration till they realize that they can do that. Mm -hmm. Whether that's helping your child with a friendship issue and giving them instruction, but then stepping back and letting them take care of something. But isn't it so tempting to just kind of jump in because you know that they're gonna go from point A to point Z and you mm -hmm. can help circumvent that and just get them from A to Z really fast by telling them what to do. But you let them walk through it because then they learn to trust God and build their own relationships. They do and I, I also work as a school counselor in a local mm -hmm. public school and I, I think that reinforces a lot of um, the need for us as parents to really step back and let our kids learn problem solving. Um, but I, I think for myself that my, my kids have even told me, my older ones, mom, I'm glad that you kind of step back and let us figure things out sometimes because, um, you know, parenting isn't a race and it's really not about what they're doing right now. It's really parenting for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. and wanting them to be Christian leaders. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's my greatest desire for my kids is that they're, that they're Christian leaders in whatever field they go into. Mm -hmm. And um, in this entitlement generation, that's truly their generation. So for them to be able to say, hey, I've got this, or to be able to fall back on the Lord, which is something I had to do. I overcame an eating disorder when I was a teen and young adult. Mm -hmm. And if it really weren't for God's word and my need to draw on Him, I would have been very stuck in that cycle much longer than I was for the for the seven years or so that I was really bound by that. So I've I've learned everything I write about, I've walked through. It's not a counselor giving clinical mm -hmm. answers, really things I'm consistently working on all the time. Oh no, yeah, I mean, it's great that you are a mental health specialist, but you are you have the street credibility to talk <laughs> about this issue, I can tell, is from one mom to the next. Uh, to connect with Brenda, go to brendayoder.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project, Balance, Busyness, and Not Doing It All. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance, with today's connections. But up next, Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel. We'll be right back. For 70 years, we've been using shortwave radio to reach many in developing countries with the gospel. We're so thankful for your support, which has helped continue the work Dr. Lester Summerall began. And through your gifts and prayers, we are excited to continue transmitting God's word by shortwave radio to every major continent in the world, sharing the good news of Jesus with those who simply can't be reached any other way. Do you sometimes wonder what life would be like if you had the energy to do those extra things you want to do but just can't? Maybe it's to go for a walk after dinner or spend your Saturdays playing with your kids. If you're tired all the time and have decided that you just always will be, guess what? You don't have to be. With Mineral Concentrate from Making Healthy Choices, this fulvic acid electrolyte mineral formula promotes maximum cell function while sparking your body's electrical conductivity. What does that mean? Well, most people say they've never felt better. The best part is it's only $29.95. And if you call now, we'll even pay to ship it to you. So dial 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. This electrolyte formula promotes dependable, solid energy day in and day out. So call the number on the screen. Do it for your spouse, your kids, your friends, and most of all, do it for you. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. It's time for life. You know, it occurs to me that biblical words like vows and commitments and pledges have somehow lost their meaning in today's culture. But we expect God to keep His promises to us, so why shouldn't He expect us to keep ours? Keeping a promise isn't always easy. Sometimes it requires us to take bold steps of faith. Dr. Lester Sumrall said, when you walk in the faith realm, you must accept the Word of God or you won't make it. 
For example, God said, if you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. And again, he said, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it. It is better you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. God will always honor his promises to you. Remember to always honor your promises to him. Time now to get an update on what is going on in that very volatile and turbulent Middle East. Our Lucie correspondent, Brian Bush, standing by in the holy city of Jerusalem to join us once again today. Brian, it's been a busy 48 hours since we last spoke with you. What are people saying there in the Middle East in follow-up to yesterday's bombing in Istanbul? Well, Chuck, the intent was clearly to hit at Turkey and striking German tourists, as this Syrian Islamic State bomber did. At this particular time, when Europeans are making bookings for upcoming holidays, it demonstrates a precise, purposed, calculated action, and not some random bombing. Uh, the latest is, is that the Turkish police have arrested uh, three Russians allegedly affiliated with Islamic State. And the rumors are now beginning to fly over here in the Middle East. I'm hearing that uh, they, these individuals that have been arrested, it may be in connection to the Russian fighter jet that was downed by Turkey recently, although that appears to be a very far-fetched hypothesis. Chuck? Now, the big story here in the U.S., those sailors who were arrested in Iranian waters. What more can you tell us from there on the ground? Well, there does seem to be a consensus, Chuck, that this was an unfortunate mishap where one of the two boats taken into custody by Iran's naval forces uh, was shown to have simply broke down, to have experienced mechanical failure. The 10 sailors, one of which is a woman, uh, were detained overnight, and uh, they were released into international waters a few hours ago after a U.S. apology for the incident. And, of course, the Pentagon is promising a full and transparent investigation. Chuck? Something like this at a time like this can have some very serious regional consequences, can't it? There's no question as to the sensitivity of the timing of this occurrence uh, with the president giving his State of the Union address last night and, of course, the larger backdrop of the Iranian nuclear talks agreement. And then don't forget the incident just a few days ago of Iran's Navy firing missiles near to a U.S. and commercial uh, ship uh, uh, lane, shipping lane there in the Gulf. But again, it seems to be readily understood by the Iranians uh, that there was uh, an occurrence that brought this about due to mechanical failure. Uh, and there are reports uh, that this was actually a training exercise, in fact, and that there was clearly no intent of malice towards Iran. Chuck? Meanwhile, you, where you are, Israel's military was in action today with an airstrike carried out on Gaza. Give us the details from what you've heard. Yes, this morning along Israel's border with Gaza, a group of men allegedly were trying to plant a roadside bomb that they could later then detonate against Israeli forces as they travel on the Israeli side of the border. They were fired upon by the Israeli Air Force, killing one of the men and wounding three others. Uh, the strike reportedly emulated from the sea uh, overall uh, there is a sense of tension uh, between Israel and Gaza. Israel has taken some what, uh, it term, what, in term, what it terms to be security precautions and security measures, and that is another fancy way of saying retaliatory strikes against militants in Gaza who have 
shot off rockets and projectiles towards Israel. But uh, this is the biggest occurrence in recent months, for sure. Chuck? All right, Brian, thank you very much. That's Brian Bush reporting from Jerusalem with one of his updates that he gives us three times a week here on The Harvest Show. Reminder that Brian does give us exclusive content from Israel that's also available on The Harvest Show Facebook page. So we want to make sure you like us, you really like us on Facebook. Of course, prayer, another big part of what we do here on The Harvest Show. And of course, we have the Lassie International Prayer Line available for you at 1-800-365-3732. The two tallest men in the building, Stefan and Pastor Charles, are standing by inside that prayer line with more. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Chuck. And uh, Pastor Charles, good to see you today, sir. Good to see you. Good to have you back. Yes. Yeah, good to be back in the seat here, even though it's in the nick of time. Yeah, yeah it's right in the nick of time, <laughs> right? Yeah, what do we have today? Prayer requests? Praise prayer, reports? Prayer requests. Prayer requests. You know, we talk about uh, quite often about uh, husband and wives relationships. Mm -hmm. And so some of the causes that have been coming in have definitely pertained to that mm. uh, because we know the enemy, how he tries to divide and conquer. Yep. And we know that that's yep. one of the greatest strengths in our uh, communities mm -hmm. is, is family. And then, of course, uh, greatest strength in the family is husband and wife. Absolutely. For instance, we have Andy in Florida. Andy calls us and he says, I called you at prayer line to pray with me that my marriage be reconciled after my wife walked out. Hmm. She said, I wow. have faith in the Lord and in prayer. Amen. And then Sharon in Oklahoma, Sharon calls us and says, I have been under great conviction as I continue to be with a man that is not my husband. Oh, boy. My husband has accepted me back more than once. She says, please pray with me that the strength of the Lord be mine. And then we have Doreen in uh, Massachusetts. Doreen says, after being married for seven years, my husband is asking for a divorce. Mm -hmm. I had four kids when we married, and we have two together. I love my husband, and I ask that the Lord's will be done. Mm -hmm. And then finally we have Dawn in Ohio who says, our marriage has been going south for some time now, mm -hmm. but I never thought my husband would have an <laughs> affair. After noticing obvious signs, I realized that he was. As of this week, he has left me to be with her. I need direction from the Lord and a job because he paid all the bills. Wow, wow. Yeah. some serious uh, issues going there on there. Are. And like you said, the attacks on the family, on mm -hmm. marriage are not uncommon. They're very common. No, they're uh, not. The good thing, though, is that you know, we've seen the Lord do some great things. I, I've yeah. seen that personally in a number of uh, uh, families that I've had the privilege of, of connecting with that, you know, when their hearts are right towards God and they, they begin mm -hmm. to turn their hearts towards the Lord again, he's uh, able to move in a powerful, powerful way mm -hmm. uh, to bring back a husband or a wife that's estranged and gone on their own, to bring them to a point of repentance, yes. to turn and to come back and right. uh, to provide grace and mercy and forgiveness mm -hmm. uh, in that whole uh, mm -hmm. uh, relationship and that dimension so that, you know, there aren't grudges that come up later and, and continue to cause problem, that the yeah. Lord can deal with those things in a once for all kind of way through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So yeah. take a moment and pray for our friends that are watching today. If you're struggling with your marriage today, just open your heart, open your hands up and, and let's receive what the Lord has for us. Yeah, Father in heaven, we just thank you today, Lord God, because we know, Lord, that your attention <laughs> is definitely on the unions of husband and wife. And we're asking you today, Lord, to touch them in a mighty way. Yes, Father Lord. God, tenderize the hearts of these wives and husbands, Lord God, and allow them to understand that they indeed need your guidance. Mm -hmm. And Father, in Jesus' mighty name today, we speak a well word over these couples, yes, Lord, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that they do indeed yes, Lord. be reconciled, Lord, and that that divorce rate, especially in the church, Lord God, will continue to decrease in Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. And any time of the day or night, we'd love to hear from you here at our Prayer Line Center. Uh, there's several ways you can connect with us. 1-800-365-3732 is a toll-free number here in the United States. Calling from outside the United States, you can call directly into Prayer Line by dialing plus one, five, seven, four, two, nine, one, 10, 10. Prayer at .com is the email address. So you can email your prayer requests in and your praise requests in and uh, we'll connect with those and read them and our counselors, volunteers will get back to you with a response as well. By any means and all means, any time of the day or night, we're here for you and we're trusting the Lord to do great and marvelous things. So give us a call or connect. Pastor Mark Lance joins us with the continuation of his teaching series this week, How to Make 2016 the Best Year of Your Life.
Dr. Lester Summerall said that faith comes not by prayer, but by continually feeding on God's Word. Paul the Apostle wrote that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Lacey Broadcasting's Partner in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries, whether by television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, a 24-hour daily prayer line, souls hear the gospel. Will you join our fellowship of partners in faith? With every soul you reach for Jesus Christ, you're laying up treasure in heaven. We need your help to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. You can be a partner in faith for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. Call today, 1-800-365-3732. Throughout this week, we are talking about some very practical steps from the book of John chapter 6 on the miracle where Jesus fed the 5,000. And our topic is how to make 2016 the best year of your life. In our last time together, I told you that step one is to evaluate where you are. Jesus pulled the disciples into the desert to evaluate, to break out of the mold in which life has you trapped. Step away from the noise of the world around you. Turn off the television, power down the laptop, silence your cell phone so you can hear the voice of God instructing you about who you are, where you are, and what you're to do next. Now, the next thing I want to share with you is this, and I pull this out of this miracle of multiplication, and it's found in verse 8 of John chapter 6. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but... What are they among so many? Step two is this, embrace what you have. Andrew here is comparing the size of the meal to the size of the multitude. And from the human perspective, it just doesn't match up. I mean, what is this among so many? All Andrew sees is the opposition of the crowd. But you see, Jesus saw an opportunity to perform the miraculous in the midst of what Andrew and the rest of the disciples saw as opposition. Now, many of you are asking right now, how am I going to get done what needs to be done when I have so little? And the enemy would like you to become so focused on what you don't have that you fail to see what you do have. He would like you to become so focused on what's not working that you don't take the time to really see what is working. Some of you watching have come through the most difficult year of your life. Last year brought some of the greatest opposition that you have ever experienced. And you're coming out on the other side of the year depleted. You're discouraged by the opposition that's come against you. But I want to tell you something. Veiled underneath that opposition is an opportunity that God has prepared for you. And unless we're willing to face the opposition, we may miss the opportunity Somebody may come and say, well, pastor, this year my company's going to downsize and I'm uh, faced with the threat of losing my job and the enemy would like to come and whisper in your ear, throw in the towel. Look at this opposition. He wants you to get emotionally bent out of shape about what's happening to you. But this is what God's saying. Did you ever think behind that opposition of your company downsizing may lay the greatest opportunity that I have ever brought to you? There may be something that you will become because of the opposition that you would have missed had you stayed where you are. I need you to understand this. Hidden in the opposition you are facing right now are the opportunities for you to be placed in a different environment that will give you different experiences that will lead you to become who you were destined to be. I'm excited for you. The enemy is going to come and try to use opposition to destroy you, but this year God is using opposition to develop you. And my word for you today is this. I believe God is about to turn your greatest opposition into your greatest opportunity, but you've got to be willing to embrace it. Be willing to fight the doubt, fight the discouragement, fight it with faith. Be willing to fight the lies of the enemy with truth. You must be willing to fight anxiety, fight the stress, Fight it with the peace of God. Slice through the wiles of the devil with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And today, stop looking at the opposition as that which is out to destroy you and start looking at opposition as that which God is using to develop you. 
Because on the other side of that opposition, I believe is an opportunity today, this year, an opportunity making you into something you would have never become without that opposition. Embrace it. Embrace what you have, even when it doesn't seem as though it is enough. Friend, we are walking into this year. We are running into 2016. We are making it the best year of our lives. First of all, evaluate where you are. Secondly, embrace what you have, even when it doesn't seem like it's enough. And I want you to join me tomorrow as we wrap up this teaching on the miracle of multiplication. This is going to be a year of multiplication in the most vital areas of your life. And I'm excited for you, my friend. I'm excited because God is making 2016 the most prosperous year of your life. If you are among the thousands who love the teaching of Lester Sumrall, then you should have the two-volume set of The Treasury of Lester Sumrall. Written in Dr. Sumrall's easy-to-understand style, you'll feel like you are getting a Bible school education. There are 732 individual readings, one for each day for two whole years. These beautiful devotionals will also make a wonderful gift for your friends, family, or even your pastor. Order yours today. To have what Scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure, and that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the Treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the Treasury Sign Up banner to receive the Treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's lesea.com. In Uganda, thousands of children pour across the border, fleeing the terror and violence taking place in South Sudan. Many have nothing but the ragged clothes they wear. They're weak from hunger and struggle to survive. Today, you have an opportunity to change the life of one of these refugee children from Sudan. For just $72, you can provide food, comfort, and security for a child for an entire year. $144 will take away the pain of hunger and introduce two children to the joy of full life that comes from knowing the love of Jesus. Please call 1-877-769-9270 today or visit feedthehungry.org. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 to help a child know how good a full life feels. The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this Let's See Broadcasting Channel. All this month, we've been talking with you about our campaign, Love Never Fails. This is when we take the gospel around the world through the contributions and donations that you give to Lacey Broadcasting. If you have made a pledge to give, why don't you fulfill that pledge by calling 1-800-365-3732 or if you'd like to give to the Ministry of Lacey Broadcasting to help us to spread the word, to send Bibles around the world, or continue with our prayer line, our 24-hour prayer line where people call in requesting prayer or sharing those praise reports, you can do so. But it starts with a donation because we are on a mission here to reach the untold billions yet untold. And when you do so, Chuck, we have an amazing resource for our viewers. Run with the vision, really the biography or autobiography of Dr. Lester Sumrall. He wrote it with Stephen Kahn, but in the first chapter alone, Dr. Sumrall <laughs> cheats death five times uh, before he's <laughs> the age of 17. And it just sets the course for a remarkable path through uh, 65 years of ministry that Dr. Sumrall, our founder, lived. And I think it's a very inspiring book, one that 
think you'll very much enjoy, and you can get that with any donation this month to Lucie Broadcasting. We talk about love never fails. We believe that, and we also believe that it's our responsibility to spread that love throughout the world. And, you know, throughout this day, I've brought you all these news stories talking about places where there isn't a whole lot of love, and maybe there's not a whole lot of hope, but certainly as Christians, we have a responsibility to spread that love. I know that's what you were trying to do over in London with mm -hmm. Feed the Hungry. Ultimately, the goal is to not only save people's lives by feeding them, right. but, but feeding them spiritually and letting them know that there's somebody out there who cares about them and that there is a hope through Jesus Christ that can sustain them. Yeah, the bottom line is introducing people to the love of God. And uh, we know that as we act as his hands and feet, and you're doing that right there in your home, in your neighborhood, your community, uh, you're doing that around the world through your partnership with LaCie Broadcasting, people can taste and see that the Lord is good. There's so many misconceptions, false assumptions, antagonisms against uh, the personhood of the real God. But when we can demonstrate through the message of the gospel, the preaching of the word of God, and the demonstration of the love of God, there is no real argument against those things in a person's heart. And so in this year of 2016, as we reach out further to touch more hearts, more souls, more homes, more lives with the good news of Jesus Christ, you as our partner, as our friend, as our uh, really hand-in-hand -hand guide along in this journey, we are going to make a difference that cannot be erased on planet Earth. But it takes partners like you to support ministries like this, like LaCie Broadcasting, to get the job done. And when it's all said and done, Jesus himself gets the glory and the credit. And people will be thankful to him and thankful to you and thankful for us all working together. We want to thank you for becoming a partner in faith and for sowing your best seed this month in January so that we could start 2016 off strong. Thank you. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Take delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Paul the Apostle wrote to his beloved Philippian friends, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Well, that's exactly how we feel about you, our partners in faith. We thank God every day for you, for your prayers, and for your faithful month-by-month -month financial support. Dr. Lester Sumrall founded LaCie Broadcasting because God gave him a vision to win one million souls for Jesus. He knew he would need a faith that moves mountains, but more than that, he knew he would need thousands of committed partners who stood with him to support this huge missionary effort. Every day, LaCie Broadcasting is reaching millions of lost men, women, and children who are seeking hope. Your loyal monthly partner in faith commitment makes it all possible. Please don't grow weary in well-doing. You are bringing hope where there is no hope. Thank you, and God bless you. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.